Here we go. Can everyone hear me? Uh, we've got 25 people in the house at the moment. Welcome, Gerhard. It's great to have you with us. Laurie. Hi, fam, she says. We're all fam here, which is a, a good thing. <laughs> Let me just get this iPad set up here. And uh, hey, Leonor. Hey, Marcus, great to be with you tonight. Uh, I am massively pleased to have so many awesome people with us. Even, even the eminent Steve Gower is in the house. Oh, man, everyone swoon. Steve is with us, man. This is one anointed man of God. Great to be with you all tonight. Um, I want to, hey, Leonore, it's so good to be together again. Um, uh, we've got people from in the Creative Academy, people from uh, outside the Creative Academy, and uh, we're just so excited to, to have you with us tonight. I am really pleased to uh, be able to bring um uh, just some uh, hopefully some wisdom <laughs> it, it certainly it's certainly what i'm going to share tonight is going to be the result of several years experience um and uh, i'm i'm i'll be honest with you i'm not really um i i don't i guess i don't generally buy into the kind of whole kind of uh big number type thing uh, because I think it can really kind of put us off kilter and um, kind of direct our ambitions maybe in the wrong direction or set false assumptions. But um, in the um, in the self-publishing side of things, um, I've now um, in the in the past five years I've surpassed seven figures. Okay, so. Six figures was a massive, I tell, I'll tell you, be honest with you, three figures was a massive breakthrough at one time. Um, you know, four figures was just like five, six, seven figures. Um, and of course, that's that's what's come in from, you know, several years of work, several years of learning, you know, and um, I, 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 
it, it's sad to say there's also been some expenses, many of them necessary, many of them probably unnecessary as a result of my, um, hey Yolanda, uh, hi Greg, Charles. Um, so, but but I, I the only reason I say that is I do want to let you know I am speaking from experience, okay? Um, I've done my, I've done, I've got the stripes, okay, here, we, we've, I've done my hard yards, and so I am just so pleased to be able to share with you um, some content from a course that I'm putting together, uh, those of you in the Creative Academy, hey, Ali, great to have you with us, um, so um, yeah, those of you in the Creative Academy, Obviously, this um, is being crafted and will be with you um, hopefully very soon. It'll be a roadmap for book publishing, like a comprehensive roadmap. This is probably the area that I've got the most experience in, I think, writing and publishing books. Um, uh, uh, but uh, And I'm going to take a portion of that tonight to share with you all because I really believe, hi, Brandon, uh, I really believe that it will be helpful for you if you are planning on writing books, okay? Writing or getting books written for you, okay? So if you are going to um, outsource your book. and um, But these are some of the things. Uh, obviously, we've only got an hour together. So um, I will be um, – it, it, I can only share a small amount – of the full kind of, uh, you know, we can only dig so far, but but I promise you, you'll get some value from this. I certainly hope so. And so um, let me just jump onto the slides here. And I, I call these the four R's. I, I don't know if in other countries you have, um, there's, a, there's something here in the UK, and I've got no idea where this saying came from, okay? And, and to me, it seems like very, like not, not like a good saying, really. But they call that there, there's fundamentals of education. They call the three R's. Now, the interesting thing is they're not actually even R's. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. Okay, reading, writing, and arithmetic are known as the three R's here. Kind of the essentials of kind of that foundational education that um, kids get in their primary years. Well, um, that's where this idea came from. And the idea of the four R's is really um, some foundational things. Um, I, yes, Greg, I will be sending out the replay. Okay, so the replay will go out to you. Um, so really, these are some I believe kind of some foundational things that you can give some consideration to um, and some preliminary things like the primary kind of uh, things that will set the stage for you to then write and publish your books. And um, there is a, there, there's a, a slight bit of tongue in cheek in the way that I present this, but you'll understand why as I go forward. So um so be before you begin your um, your book writing adventure, um, the the full course that I'm preparing is about um, specifically about writing a nonfiction book. But this particular section um, applies very very much to any kind of um, writing and publishing that you may want to do. And um, what I've got, what I'm talking about tonight is the three R's of successful self publishing. These are the things that you need to know, okay, before you write your book. And then the fourth R is the real secret um, that comes from uh, really applying the first three. Okay, so it's, uh, I guess the fourth R could, could be uh, the R for the word result, because uh, this the fourth R will be the result of giving some time and some attention to these first three, okay? Um, okay, so we've got three R's here. I would love if you could um, share with me. Let me see if I can. Oh, hang on. How do I swap this over? How can I? Ba -ba -ba, camera. Ah, 
Okay, you guys can see my iPad now, yeah? And let me just, so we've got three, can everyone see my iPad there? It looks like it, yes, uh, we're, we're good here. Um, and so um, can anyone just drop in the, uh, drop in the chat what you think these three fundamental R words might be that you would need to consider before you write and publish a book. And I, I'm speaking, I'm speaking specifically about self-publishing here. Okay. Uh, I mean, the truth would be, it would be true of, of any kind of publishing. Uh, drop in the chat box for me what you think these R's might be. Just Just any words that you think may come to mind that you think, okay, this is something that I need to uh, consider, research, okay? I like that. We've got market research, research, reason. Oh, wow, I like that. Reason. I think I might have to add some R's here. Readers. Um, Rights, research, readers, knowledge. I'm not quite sure how knowledge is an R word, but we're, we're, that, that sounds good. You would need some knowledge, that's for sure. The, the interesting thing is, guys, all of you, whoever you are, okay, um, we've got rights here. Someone says um, revisions. Wow. Um, I saw another one up here, replicate, and I'm assuming that that would mean go in and see what other people are doing. Okay, so there's a, there's a heap of different um, R's that, that we've covered here. Some of you are hitting things on the head here, and all of these are actually, there. there is um, certainly some reason. Have I got reason there? You definitely need to know your reason for writing a book. That's for sure. It will actually, having a reason to write your book, knowing your why is going to make a huge difference to um, actually finishing your book. This is the thing. So many people start well, but don't finish. And a, a big reason for that is that they don't have a, a well-established enough and well-rooted enough reason for writing it. Okay, so, um, but let me, let me jump back to my slides now, and I will share with you, um, and let me put myself back on the camera here. Okay, um, these are the three R's that I think are the most important, okay? And um, like I say, it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but this is what it all comes back down to, okay? So the three R's of successful self-publishing. Reader, and I know someone put readers in there. Reader, reader. A book, the purpose of a book is the reader, okay? A book really fulfills its purpose not when it's written, Although there is some, there's some value in that. Don't misunderstand me. There is some inherent value in us pouring our heart onto the page. I have many books that I have written that will never see any audience beyond just me and the Holy Ghost. You know, there are there are some books that I would I would like I, I would go bright red if people were to read some of the conversations I've had over the years as I've kind of worked through things with the Holy Ghost. So, um, but when, when we're talking a public facing book, okay, um, the reader really is the focus of um, what you are writing. OK, because what we need to understand is that our book is not about us. Your book is not about you. It's a, it's not about you. Sometimes we can come and we can be very um, we can get very caught up in trying to make a book for ourselves. 
we can get very caught up in trying to write a book that we are happy with, that we um, that, that pleases us, okay? And I'm not saying that that shouldn't be the case. There should be an element of pride in what we produce. There should be an element of feeling as though you are very much, um, that your voice is heard on the page, but really, ultimately, you are not writing the book for you. You're writing the book for your reader. And although that sounds like an obvious thing to say, I can assure you, if you will keep this simple kind of um, repetition, mantra, whatever you want to call it, if you will keep this um, at the front of your thinking throughout the whole process of like right from before you even put pen to paper or um, a, a finger on the keys, yeah, if you will remember reader, 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 it will make a huge difference to the way your book develops and the way your book is presented once it gets out to market. Because as we've said, your book is not about you. And uh, as much as we would like to believe that this would be the case, okay, and you can drop in the, um, in the chat for me what you think the word might be that completes this sentence, okay? Your reader does not care about you. Even the most sweet little old lady in Southern America reading your historical fiction book, okay? Even the, 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 the person who's picked up your memoir and is looking to discover more about your life, they ultimately don't care about you. They care about who. Who does the reader? Why does a reader buy a book? You tell me in the in the chat box here. The reader doesn't care about you. They care about who's going to give me some ideas here. Has everyone gone shy on me? Okay. I will tell you who they care about. And as much as we would like to believe that, as much as we would like to believe that, yeah, absolutely. They, be, they care about themselves. And there's actually nothing wrong with that, okay? They're looking to satisfy a felt need. They're looking for what they can get from the book. They're looking at their problems, their feelings, their troubles. Really, they care about themselves. And, and we, again, we need to come when we're preparing a book, when we're writing a book, we need to have that in, in our frame. Okay, we need to understand I am not writing this for me. I'm writing this for the people who will ultimately give purpose to what I am writing. They care about themselves. They're looking, if it's a nonfiction book, often looking for an answer to a question, a solution to a problem. You know, they, they're looking for resolution to some kind of issue that they have. They want to learn something. They want to, to grow in some way. For a fiction book, they're looking to be entertained. But um, I'll tell you this, man, fiction readers know what they like. They know what they like and they know why they buy a book and they want you to give it to them. OK, you don't write a book, um, uh, particularly not if you're writing kind of just popular fiction that actually sells. Yeah. I mean, you could write some groundbreaking piece of literature that completely blows the box open. But um, that's that, that doesn't happen often. OK. If I've built a business on writing books that are writing and having written and publishing books that really have the, the reader very squarely in focus. If they like mystery, I will give them mystery. If they want romance, I'll give them romance. In my uh, books that I write um, about prayer, in the books that I write about publishing and, and other kind of practical things, I'm always thinking, what is the reader looking to get out of this? Yeah. And we're going to just dig into this a bit more because this is the number one mistake 
that first time authors often make. And like, again, it's kind of tongue in cheek, but many first time authors make this um, same mistake many times over. Second time author, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, keep making the same mistake. And this is the mistake that they make. They something their book and then go try to find something, okay? And I will just tell you what these words are, okay? They write their book and then they go and try and find their audience, okay? Or it could be readers, yeah? They write their book and then they go try and find their audience. And I think that that honestly is the number one mistake that many authors make. And as I say, sadly, it sometimes happens many time, times over. What I would suggest is that you go find your audience and then write your book. Now, this is great, uh, honestly, great advice. You may have heard it before. So um, I, I apologize if you feel as though this is kind of old news. But uh, sometimes we need to hear the fundamentals. We need to hear the same thing again and again until it actually gets down on the inside of us. And as Ali said earlier concerning the reason for writing a book, this needs to get down on the inside of us so it becomes really a part of our just the the frame through which we look when we begin to present our content and our information um, to to out to the world because really what we are seeking to do as authors um, as content creators is to really um, is to serve, an audience, minister and serve an audience, okay? And so we want to come and we want to take our three R's, okay? And I think that there was some great, um, there were some great things that people put here that could supplement this or be equal to these three. And, um, but the, the three that I want to cover tonight our research, read, and reach. Now, to me, again, every one of these, and the reason I kind of hammed it up with reader, 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 is all three of these are reader-centric, okay? Research, read, and reach. And so we'll start with research, okay? So if we start with research, if you are looking to write a book, and I'm assuming that if you are on this webinar, you are probably either already doing that or you are considering um, that you might want to do it. And even if you were looking to outsource the writing of the book, if you had an idea and you were going to get a ghostwriter to do it for you, um, again, these are still some things that you would want to do so you know what you are asking of um, the people who you uh, get to write for you. And um, obviously there's a, there's a lot that we could go into in the research phase. You know, this isn't about researching the subject that you're going to write about and things like that. Although obviously that is very much going to be part of what you, what you would do. Now, I, I do suggest that um, if you're going to write a book, it's something that is, that you know about, okay? It's it's like you don't just choose some random. I, I mean, I, having said that, I have outsourced numerous books about random subjects that I knew very little about, but I always made sure I hired someone who did know a great deal about it. Um, but the kind of research that I'm talking about tonight is reader, 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 okay? And so what we want to do is go in and we want to look first and see what our reader is already reading. OK, and in this, um, I generally OK, this is like a, just just the base level. 
but even this will make a huge difference and be very helpful if you if you are considering um, putting some content out there on Amazon or, or wherever else is that you take some time and look and see what your reader is already looking at. What is what? Where are they frequenting and what books are they picking up and putting money on the table to enjoy? And this could simply be you could be looking at titles, subjects, themes, descriptions, categories. All of these things can really help to enlighten you as to how you can later package and present your book in a way that will fit and dovetail in with what audiences are already enjoying and already reading. You know, it's it's oftentimes um, people feel as though they have to be like really original, but I've I found largely that different is not. There's no premium on being like massively original or massively different, especially not in fiction, but even in nonfiction, there, there tends to be umbrella subjects and very specific, um, very specific areas that people are looking to resolve their problems and pain in. Yeah. And so don't be too concerned if what you believe you know and what you believe you have to bring has already been brought, like even if it's been brought 10,000 times. Yeah, because there is always new an audience is always looking for something more if they're passionate about a subject like I, I, I really love reading about simplicity and minimalism and the whole kind of um uh, minimalism movement and simplifying and uh, all of that. I love that. I can't actually, I honestly can't get enough of it. Business books, okay, uh, books about mindset and business and building self, books about prayer. There are numerous subjects that I am personally very, very interested in and very passionate about. And just because I've read one great book on that subject doesn't mean that I won't immediately go and look for another book on the same subject so I can get another perspective on it, so I can look at another facet of it. And so so <laughs> Nina's saying she's got so many books on photography, she could open her own bookstore. <laughs> maybe she'll be not, maybe she'll be writing a book on photography soon. Um, but yeah, so where there's a passion, where there's an audience, where there are readers, yeah, they are they are willing to um, read very much the same around the same subjects, and you can just bring your own unique take. I'm going to right now, let me just go to Amazon um, and I'm going to Amazon.com. I'm going to see if I can share my screen with you guys. OK, so let me. Uh, how would I do this? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Share screen. And I am going to okay, i'm I'm kind of got a few different windows open here. Uh, I'm assuming you can see my screen right now. Um, yeah, okay, here we go. So I am going to um, just share some stuff around actually uh, doing this. Okay, so this is how I do this part of the equation. Obviously, I can't go into the kind of full details, but I'll share briefly how I go about doing this. So um, I'm on Amazon.com. I tend to use the Amazon.com site just because it's the kind of big daddy of the Amazon sites. I come in here and search for all and go to Kindle e-readers and books. Once you're in Kindle e-readers and books, 
You can come down here to Kindle Books. And then once you're in Kindle Books, yeah, down the side here, um, you can see the departments. And we've got the Kindle Store. And then, like Nina was talking about arts and photography, you've got these various um, categories here, business and money, children's books, uh, comics, uh, computers, technology, cookbooks, food and wine. I, I've done pretty well with some cookbooks in the past, believe it or not. Um, so, so you can see that they have like these top level categories in the Kindle store. Now, the reason why these are top level categories is because people buy books here. People buy in these um, broad umbrellas of interest, yeah? Amazon will never do anything if it doesn't make money. Uh, you can tell here, I, mu I must have been looking at um, Amish romance recently because this seems like Amish romance uh, kind of everywhere here at the moment. I published an Amish, ro Amish romance book recently, so I think that that's, that's why I'm been bombarded with Amish. Um, and so we come down here into departments and let's go, for example, so I know that we're, we're uh, probably all believers here. Let me go into, we'll look at nonfiction, although you would just follow the same kind of um, pathway if you were doing fiction, come into religion and spirituality. And then again, as you dig down, now what we see is it goes into various religions, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to go into Christian books and Bibles. And then I'm digging further down, okay? In Christian books and Bibles, I can go into Christian fiction. I can go into Christian living, uh, ministry, theology, worship, and devotion. Let me just go into Christian living because I know that that even digs down further. Um, and then in here, we've got various faith, uh, family, holidays, inspirational leadership, marriage. Okay, so we've dug right down into um, various areas. Uh, spiritual warfare here is somewhere that I've published into in the past, personal growth. So let's go into, let's try personal growth, for example. And then in personal growth, Okay, so I've come down, I've dug through down, and we've now reached kind of the sub, 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 sub category in Christian personal growth. And we can see, um, okay, what I would then do, I would be looking here, okay, and I would be looking to see what kinds of books are selling well. OK, I would be looking to see what kind of titles they've got. OK, um, and I can look at more results here. I can look and I can see what kind of titles they've got. I can see what kind of covers they've got. I can uh, dig further down. OK, so I can jump in and let's say this um, one by Jenny Al Allen about our thoughts. OK, we've also I think I noticed um, Joyce's kind of perennial bestseller somewhere in there, Battlefield of the Mind. So let's click on this book. And um, we can see that um, we can then read descriptions of the books. We can look at titles, see the kind of subjects that people are um, giving consideration to at the moment. We can also come down here to product details and in product details we can see that um, this book is presently number four in christian inspiration um, we can see it's number six in women's christian living we can see it's number 11 in personal growth and christianity so let's say for example we were writing a book that would be um, aimed at christian women okay um, we can click on this link okay because these are live links under the product details and that will then take us to that chart okay these are the best sellers in this particular um category okay so we've got the top 50 
And then you can go to the next page and you can see the next 50. You can see the top 100. And again, we can then look through these different books. We've got some, um, Liz is uh, like, she is rocking it, man. She's um, a Christian fiction writer. Um, Hope Callahan is someone that I've spent some time uh, chatting with. She is a, another amazing fiction author. But then we've also got a number of nonfiction books. Okay. Uh, the Man God Has For You. That's not a problem that I face, but some other people might face it. Um, forgiving What You Can't Forget. Um, Get Out of Your Head is the one that we kind of used as our avenue in here. Um, the Women of the Bible. Uh, becoming the woman that God wants you to be, be present over perfect, fervent, great book, great book. Uh, when women pray, so uh, do it afraid. So we can come in and we can begin to dig through these various charts. And what you'll find is there are often... Um, there are often themes that come up again and again. There are subjects that come up again and again. There are certain, and, and what you can um, do is then click through to the individual books, read the, obviously kind of take note of some of the titles, take note of the descriptions, find out, and then click through to the book, okay? Now, it's going to take you right to the kind of beginning of the text of the book. What I would suggest is that you um, scroll back up, okay, and look at the co table of contents. So you can look here at the table of contents in any of the books, and you can see the subjects, because obviously these chapter titles, now this may not work so well for fiction, but certainly for um, nonfiction, this works extremely well. You can see what subjects these books are tackling and what solutions, because obviously these are all, all of these will be seeking to offer some kind of counsel and solution for people. Um, you can see what kinds of uh, subjects have been covered here. And you may even find, okay, like, for example, I'm really drawn to this. For chapter nine, finding your true self. That alone would make a great book title. Or help me, I don't understand myself. Or, um, and so what, what you'll be able to do as you go through this process is you'll be able to take a look OK, and see what books are selling, what kind of books, subjects people are reading in any given kind of um, corner of the market, in any um, area of like in the in the categories that we're talking about. OK, um, and and then dig a bit deeper, find out what the book is about, find out some of the subjects that they're tackling. What this will do for you, okay, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and just come back to my slides. Okay, and in doing that, I mean, that, that was like very, very simple. I mean, you can see that anyone could, could actually do that. You can see, you'll begin to see titles, subjects, themes. In the descriptions, you'll find what kind of promises are being offered to the reader because essentially a description is the sales page you know like like we're we, we are in the book selling business um we're in the book we're in the service business to be honest we serve readers but we serve them by selling what they need to them okay and and then the categories as you dig through the categories it's really going to open up and broaden your understanding of what readers are looking for okay um one question that i also ask cuz obviously we're looking and seeing okay what is it people are looking for here 
the Hebrew word for word, the word word, okay, one of them is dabar, and it means a speaking that enacts what it says. It's not just a sound or a symbol, but it's an action. Yeah, this is the this is the force that brings transformation to your readers. What you write can impact readers. And particularly if you're writing nonfiction, but even in fiction, okay, fiction, nonfiction, it really doesn't matter. One great question to ask is what will my book do for my reader? Okay, bearing in mind that words are active, words actually uh, carry life or they carry death, they are that they're, they're a spiritual supernatural power you know like words are the most powerful thing in the universe and so your book can bring transformation it can bring something to people that they would not otherwise have encountered and you can take them from one place to another <clears throat> by means of your words yeah and so ask yourself in this process of research what do I want my book to do? Okay, so when I write about prayer, I'm not really looking to just um, kind of give people a bunch of information about what I, how I pray. Yeah, what I'm interested in is what will it do for them? How will it, how will it move them into the prayer closet? How will it carry them into the presence? How will it lead them to a place of encounter? And so my focus, again, reader, 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 what will this do for my reader? OK. And then the second um, the second R, the second reader R is read. Um, this is really very, very helpful. OK. And um, I, I really do believe in being a reader first and a writer second. Hearing and reading others will help you discover your voice and also will help you accept your own voice. What I've found is as I've as I've discovered different writers that I kind of really connect with, that it's almost like it gives me permission to step up and speak out and really just allow my voice to come through. You know, I've, it's almost like um, that, that in reading someone else who thinks or speaks or communicates in a way that kind of um, connects with who I am on the inside and how I think and how I might speak or how I might communicate, it's like a, it's like a stamp of endorsement or something that just synergizes that helps me discover my voice. And you have a unique voice. You have a voice that you bring in your writing and through your books, whether it's stories you're telling or whether it's um, you, whether you're writing nonfiction. So you're kind of more communicating um, information or principles, you know, whatever it may be, you will have your unique way of communicating that. And that's why you can find a place in any any of these charts, any of these marketplaces, just because someone else has written a book about prayer doesn't mean your book doesn't need to be written. Just because someone else has written historical fiction or Amish romance like we were looking at there in my kind of recommended reads, just because someone has, else has written a cozy mystery, that's what I published today. I've got a, a series underway. Um, it's just because I've done that, it, just because other people have done that doesn't mean there's not room for what I can bring. Yeah. And one of the ways in which you can find how best to serve the reader is do that research as we've looked at first and get a kind of 10,000 foot view and then come down, kind of land the plane and then purchase some books or, or, or grab some books on Kindle Unlimited or however it is, wherever you buy your books. So I've got a little kind of mat that I stand on here and I, I move around so much it kind of gets all shoved into, into the uh, into the wall. Um, so 
jump in there, buy some of the more more popular books or buy some of the books that really kind of dovetail in with the kind of stories that you want to write or the um, the subjects that you want to write into. And look, as you look through them, and particularly if you read with any depth into these and read a, a range of books, generally what you'll find is that there are tropes within them. This is true of actually, to be honest, fiction and nonfiction. There are there are common subjects. There are common themes that come through. There there are certain there's certain styles and a and a voice that will be quite common within a particular sphere and a particular marketplace, a particular category, a particular kind of subject or niche or niche. Yeah, that. Um, you can, as you read, you'll find where your instrument fits in the, in the orchestra. You'll find where your voice fits in that kind of symphony that's taking place that readers are already listening to, the conversations they're already having. You will find how you can come in and you can bring value to a conversation that's already taking place. Yeah, um, you'll see um, certainly within in fiction, this is so, so important is that oftentimes in fiction, particularly once you dig down into kind of very specific sub 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 categories, it's oftentimes the same story told over and over and over again. Yeah. And you just have to come in and tell the same story, different clothes, maybe a different setting, and your readers will absolutely love you for it. They're not looking for something new. And in, then in nonfiction, yeah, what you're going to find is you're going to find that um, there are very common things that people are tackling, very common subjects that people are looking to resolve. And there will be um, a certain transformation that that is being promised again and again and again. Yeah, there'll be certain the books within a particular kind of niche or sphere will be um, speaking to core issues and they will be offering very, very similar solutions just showing a different facet of wisdom on that just shining a different light on that subject um, and you can speak into those you can speak into those subjects that are already being written about spoken about and passionately pursued by people so i really encourage you to kind of do that 10,000 view and then come down and there'll be maybe some books that you discover during your research. Always look for the ones that readers are, are reading, not necessarily just the kind of obscure things that you want to read, but like see what your audience, your potential audience are actually already buying. Pick those books up and read them, okay? And read a range so you can begin to see like the, yes, the difference is, but what you're looking for is like what what's the commonality here, yeah, and 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 then we will um our final R okay of these three is reach okay, and what this R really is um looking to looking to tackle okay, oops, hang on, whoops. Hang on, what am I doing here? Yeah, there, that's what I want. Okay, I'm I'm actually able to look and see what my uh what the slides are here. So I'm just taking a look through so I don't kind of go off topic here. So we're looking at reach, okay. Now, this is something that, uh, and, and I would say, you know, don't freak out, you know, don't, don't, don't not write your book just because you don't have some guaranteed audience that you're going to um, find, okay, or that you've not already got. I started particularly in fiction, like zero, absolutely zero, 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 yeah, and I now um, do a good 
five figures um, a month from fiction books that we publish. And, and so um, God has been good to us, and it's really come as a result of this exact process that I'm, I'm sharing with you tonight, is that my main focus has been on doing my R's, getting in there with the fundamentals, and finding out what is the reader already reading, and then reading into it, finding out what they are wanting, what is what what itch do they want to scratch, you know what 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 I mean in a in a kind of uh, pretty crude likelihood, you know what what fix are they looking to to have? What is it? What what's what what's their drug? Yeah, what what storylines are they looking for? What kind of solutions and answers are they craving and how can i give it to them how can i best give it to them that doesn't mean that you compromise what you want to say but in keeping reader 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 in focus what it will do is it will help you communicate and package what you uh, already have in your heart in a way that will be received and understood it's a bit like when when they when you like they want to get a kid to take um we've got something over here called Calpol. It's like medicine for kids, yeah? And they make it like this sweet pink liquid, yeah? Even I love Calpol. I mean, I if if it were allowed, I'd probably drink it. You know, in a <laughs> just pour it cuz it's like really sweet, very tasty. So they take the medicine, but they prepare it in a way that is palatable for the specific audience. Okay. By the way, I'm not suggesting that you drink Calpol. Just, just be clear about that. But, but you know, they they prepare the medicine, okay, in a way that will be palatable and understood and satisfying to the audience. Yeah, it doesn't mean that they've taken out the active ingredients. It doesn't mean that they've compromised anything. They just understand that if we want to get this inside someone and, and get the medicine where it needs to be to do its work, then I need to, we need to do something to make it desirable. It's the same for you with your books. It's the same for you with your stories. You got to make them palatable, desirable, tasty, delicious for the audience, not for you. Okay. You know, you might be gluten free, you might be whatever else. Okay. And, and again, I'm kind of playing with pictures here. But, you know, when it comes to your audience, you're not thinking about what do I want? How would I like this? What tastes good to me? You're looking and thinking, I've got this message. I've got this story. How can I best communicate it in a way that will bless the audience that I'm seeking to reach? And you'll be amazed that you can do that very honestly and very ethically without kind of scrunching and squeezing and twisting what you want to say. Okay. You can do it in a, in a way that st remains true to yourself, but also in a way that kind of, as I say, steps into the conversation that's already happening. And so here with them um, looking at reach, you want to be asking yourself, okay, even in this early stage, before you even begin writing, what are my avenues to audience? Um, do I have an existing sphere of influence? Do I have like friend groups? Do I have connections? that would that this would kind of connect with um are that can i go into if you've ever done facebook adverts okay this is one of the ways that i do this i'm not going to show this tonight maybe we'll do so, something else about specifically about facebook ads facebook's an amazing place okay um and i'm not going to get into the conversation about the ethics of facebook um, but it is a selling machine and you can target there's no, there's never been anything like it i don't think on the planet you can actually go in there um, and in the ad manager you can say okay 
I want to target, let's say, for example, I do some uh, historical fiction. It's largely an older demographic. It's largely a female demographic. Um, but certain, certain genres, some work well in the UK, some work well in the States. So let's say I, I go for Western historical. I can go into the Facebook ads manager and I can say, look, I want you to present this book to um, American women aged between 35 and 65 plus in North America. Um, and I want them to, and then you can dig down into their interests. I want them to be interested in historical fiction. Or I want, there's a, there's a certain kind of sub, sub, sub genre called mail order brides. It's not as kind of uh, criminal as it sounds. It's like a historical kind of uh, trope where uh, at, in the early days of the frontier, men would kind of advertise for brides to come out and join them on the frontier. It's a, a whole, there's a whole world there like that you can, I, I've, um, and so that's one area that I write into. You can actually target people who are interested in mail order bride books. And so what you can do in your specific what what you are seeking to do you can come in like i've got a prayer journal for example that i sell that i wrote and developed and i sell it to people who are interested in joyce mayer because there's a there and there are certain and it's worth going into the um ad manager because you can um some certain interests you just won't find there and that could actually be um uh, would would enjoy creating a cost. I will be doing something about Facebook ads in more depth, Bill, for sure. And Facebook ads have hugely contributed to my success, especially in fiction. Yeah. Um, and, and like I say, what I will do before I even head into a particular sphere of fiction is I will go through this process. I will look at the ad demographics and targets that are available. And if those targets are not available through the Facebook ad manager, I'll, I will um, think twice about whether I want to put other things into. Um, um, what have we got here, Greg? Podia versus or plus ad, Amador, Amazon, YouTube, Facebook. I mean, Podia is really where I deliver my... Um, course content through okay so podia is not really somewhere that i would necessarily uh, if i were uh, on the on the subject of courses and things like that if you are producing courses or educational materials i would probably go look and do um research at somewhere like udemy.com um, another area that you can look and give consideration to is who else is already speaking to the audience that I want to reach and how could I partner with them? How could I affiliate with them? Um, if I've already got relationships with them, can I leverage that friendship in some way um, in order to get my book or my course in front of their audience? OK, and there are ways to make sure that that is a win win. Now, I've, I'm aware that I've got like just a couple of minutes left here. And so I want to jump on to the fourth R. Um, and this is really the result of kind of digging into the first three with um, and, and, and giving time to that, kind of immersing yourself in that a little bit. OK, and so what will the result of the three R's B. Okay. What will the three R's result be? And this is what I believe is the key. Okay. To that, that winning formula. Okay. Is resonance. Okay. And um, might you have resources making publishing on Amazon, both in print and ebook simple. Uh, I, I do, Brad, I can um, I can send some stuff over. Um, so do if I've not got your email, Brad, send your email. Just just drop me an email to get in touch at 
get in touch at indieauthor.com drop me an email brad okay and i will send you some links to some courses that i've done specifically about that um and so the the result of getting these other three things is resonance resonance is such a powerful word yeah it's um it, in it it's actually it talks about the quality of a sound being deep and full and having the power to evoke enduring images, memories, and emotions. And resonance, when you resonate with your audience, your book not only does something for them, but it makes them feel something. It goes deeper than the surface. It goes deeper than just transferring information. When you understand the people that you're writing to, when you've taken time to find out what their pain is, when you've taken time to consider what it is they're looking for and, and what itch they want to scratch, your book will resonate in a way that maybe other books would not. And I just love this idea of like a quality book being deep and full. There's a depth to this. It goes like, like the Bible talks about deep calling to deep. And that's what we want to do in our books, whether they're, whether they're stories or whether they are nonfiction, where we're speaking to an audience um, concerning a particular niche or area, area of expertise. We want it to be something more than just a, like a, like you, you can, I, I've got like, I bought this mic recently. Yeah. Comes with a little instruction book. It's more than we're, we're doing more than just an instruction book. Press this button, press that button or whatever. We actually want to go. We want to get under the person's skin and call to something within them. That's what this process will help you do. I really believe it. And it will make your book evocative of something more powerful. You know, well, your book will, your, your readers will go away thinking like with that wow factor, like just like, wow, that was, that was more than just words on a page. I believe that we can do that. And um, I, I, I shall I wrap up? I'll wrap up. Um, yeah, let me wrap up quickly just with these last two slides of this section. I, I see that there are essentially because this is a nonfiction. Uh, this was from a nonfiction course that I've created. Um, and so I, I see there being essentially two kinds of nonfiction book. Um, and we, we'll we'll do something very specific on fiction as well. Although everything I've shared tonight like uh, applies to both. Yeah. Um, but specifically talking about nonfiction, I think there's teaching. Yeah. Problem solving principles. And there's testimony where you've got memoirs or stories. One is based on principles. The other per is based on person. Now, if you can bring these two together, yeah, and, and really create some teachimony books. You can see the eye in the middle there. The reason I've uh, highlighted the eye is that I think we need to infuse our books with personality. We want to infuse our books with heart and passion and life. Something, something more than just, like I say, words on a page. Words are life. Words are power. Words can change and transform the people who read them. When they go down, the Bible says that they go down into the heart. They go down into the spirit and they can change people. I believe that you, my dear friends here, and I wish I could look you in the eye right now. I wish I could like personally look you right in the eye and just say, your words can change the world. Your words can change the world. Yeah. And, you know, your book is not just about the transfer of information. It is about transformation. And I just believe that we are agents of change. I believe that we are agents of transformation. And uh, I believe that you are. I honestly do. 
Um, I, I'm going to wrap up now, but if you've got any questions, I can hang around for um, for as long as you would like me to. I can answer questions here, or you will be very, very welcome to drop me an email, uh, get in touch at indieauthor.com, um, and I would I, I would love to help in any way that I can. Uh, it's been a pleasure being with you tonight. Um, as Jeanette said, uh, she says, I've never heard anyone talk about writing with such passion. Um, I, I am I am quite passionate about this. I'm quite passionate, full stop. But, but um, I, I am very passionate about this. I personally have been changed by the books that I've read. And I believe that the books that I write can personally change people. And, uh, and that goes for both um, the fiction that we produce and the nonfiction. Uh, there's nothing more powerful, honestly, my, my, my friends, there is nothing more powerful than a story, okay? And even when you're writing your nonfiction, you know, weave that I right in the middle of it. Um, do I have anything on how to begin to sort the technical aspects of producing your books. Steve, I will send something to you. Uh, I'll send something to you about that. And I will send you something. Um, I will send you something about marketing them as well. Absolutely, Steve. Uh, let me note down. Um, I'll send something out afterwards. I, I should have some, I should have some like grand offer at the end of this, shouldn't I really? Like, you know, it's usually $25 million, but tonight only. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, there, there, I probably have some webinars that I've previously done, Steve. Um, I do have... Um, courses that I sell uh, that go into the whole thing in great detail, um, both for producing books and producing online courses, um, marketing. I think we need to do a marketing webinar, don't we, really? Um, yeah, awesome. Any YouTube seminars? Um, I don't have much on YouTube about um, about the publishing side of things. I've not really leveraged YouTube, to be honest. I've got a lot of stuff on there about Scrivener, so actually the technical side of writing books, but not a great deal at the moment about the actual writing of books, Steve. Um I'll tell you what, guys, I'll send out what, what I'll do with the um, replay of this. I will, uh, rather than just throw it out there, I will do my best, okay, to um, collate some possible uh, courses and resources, some of them free, some of them paid, okay, that you could... Um, uh that that you would be able to check out okay this is this totally my bag man this this like whole um publishing books selling books creating courses all that kind of stuff so i'll send out some some key things um i do have um if you go to i mean this is this is my christian creative dot Academy. If you want, if you want the whole, if you want the whole package, yeah, um, that's that's my baby. The Christian Creative Academy is where all of my stuff goes, um, and so uh, that you know, there's everything about everything that I've ever done about publishing books, selling books. Um, writing courses, developing websites, building email lists, you name it, it's in there. And um, anyone who's in the academy would uh, be able to tell you that we're always adding more stuff in there. 
um, and really looking for a way to help you get your value out, your value out to the world, to get out what's in your heart so other people can enjoy it and consume it. So um, do, do check out the Christian Creative Academy if you get the opportunity. Um, it's uh, honestly the best place. <laughs> It's the best place if you want to if you want to learn this stuff. Um, I've got individual courses on all of these different things, um, but the academy for a one-time investment, it's a significant investment. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend it's not, um, but you're gonna get more than your money's worth, um, and especially because I know what what I'm gonna be putting into it over the coming year, and the, and the coming years it will be like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just yeah. Anyways, um, check check that out. As I say, I'll send out an email to you all with um, links to various things, both free and paid. Um, but uh, I mean, certainly, man, I would love to encourage you and welcome you into the Christian Creative Academy. Should you ever want to jump in there, um, and uh, like I say, you'll get you'll find everything that you need there. And if you don't find it, you'll probably tell me, look, it's not there. And um, I'll look for a way to uh, make it happen. So, um, hey, God bless you all. It's been a real pleasure being with you tonight. Um, I, I, lo I love talking about this stuff. Let me close in prayer. Father, I just thank you so much for your amazing grace. I thank you for these wonderful people. I pray, Father, their hearts will have been stirred tonight. And that they will realize, oh God, that there's such a desperate need for them to step up and step out and share their grace and share their power and share their life with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is king of kings, yeah? Jesus first, everything else follows. Jesus first, everything else follows. Hey, God bless you, and we will see you soon.